This is a production of the Hardway HQ Podcasting Network. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Unfiltered here, HardwayHQ.com, via the Hardway HQ Podcasting Network. You'll find this podcast through iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, iHeartRadio, the vast gamut of podcasting applications, as well as the aforementioned HardwayHQ.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok at HardwayHQ, Instagram at the HardwayHQ, if there's any other one. Advertising concerns, hate mail, John at HardwayHQ.com. That's J O N at, don't right, at, use the A with the circles around it. Cool gimmick, cool shtick, cool deal, baby. John at HardwayHQ.com. I'm John Harder here in the beautiful, luxurious Hardway HQ Studios, bringing you another edition of Unfiltered. My man Barry Bettman hanging out right behind me. And last night was kind of a full circle moment for me as it comes to pro wrestling commentary. Uh, ending the ace year, my commentary year, last night uh, for American Championship Entertainment, calling Rise to Power. And for me, Rise to Power uh, is a big event for me personally. I mean, back in 2007... Uh, that was the first ever show I was involved with when it came to Ace Pro Wrestling, doing camera duties and 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 holding you know the camera, being able to film a lot of great moments on that night, being able to film uh, Alex Shelley going one on one with Jay Lethal for Jay's X Division Championship, Mo Sexton winning the first, winning the the Ace Heavyweight Championship, the new belt that Mike Morgan bought in 2007, defeating Hollywood Joe Hardway. I got to call Giovanni Moranka taking out the knee of Ozzy Envy on that night. And Russian Roulette was on that card. I mean, which was a seven-way match where you get to pick. If you get a pinfall, you pick who's eliminated. Love that concept. Probably the most innovative multi-man concept ever. Mike Morgan deserves a wealth of credit. Wish I could see more of that. But, be that as it may. Last night was also a culmination of something. For a lot of people, might be very small. But for me, it's a big deal. Um, this notebook has, was completed. Uh, this is the first notebook that I filled with commentary notes fully since twenty nine uh, since I started doing commentary again at twenty nineteen, and for for me you got to understand uh, when it comes for me, uh, pro wrestling commentary was something I loved doing when I did my first ever live show commentary for Ace September nineteenth two thousand nine my twenty fourth birthday a few days before I went through a lot of heartbreak. Uh, and three days later, I went and started doing pro wrestling commentary. And my first ever match, and this is how full circle my life goes, by the way. Uh, my first ever match I called was with Bandito Jr. winning the Diamond Division Championship from uh, from Sean Walker that night. That was the first ever match I called live. And coincidentally, last night now, the referee, uh, Bandito Jr., was actually, he actually made an, he actually made an appearance, just stopping by, watching the Ace show live. Uh, watching as a fan, we all know what he's doing with WWE. He's a great referee, and you see him all the time. Uh, Bandito was there, and I didn't even recognize him because he had the, the mask on. And I go, John, I go, holy crap, caught me off guard completely. So it was great to see him full circle there. And my pro wrestling commentary life, I mean, I've done it. I did pro wrestling commentary straight forward for multiple different companies for for five years, I did a show for Beyond. I mean, I've done WSU, Ace, BWO, NWA on Fire, and even an On Point uh, wrestling event, On Point wrestling event. Um, I was able to do, and you can't forget Jersey Wrestling Elite, Prestige Wrestling, run by Big Jose. I, I've been commentating, I commentated straight forward from 2009, straight until about 2014, and November 2013, I lost my father, and I fell out of love with pro wrestling. I mean, I fell out of love with pro wrestling. Please, my dad was the reason why I got into wrestling and, and all that stuff. And I really hated pro wrestling for such a long time, a complete long time. And I really believe the start of that was then. And then I was going through the motions, trying to avoid myself from commentary, watching Cheyenne Ortiz and Mikey D do their thing. And just sitting in the background, I didn't want to commentate anymore. I hated doing commentary. I hated it. And... It's, I look back at that time and realize I should have kept doing it straightforward and you know not let anything affect my mind, but I had to I, I had to get away from commentary and I had to get away from wrestling and to the point where I really just became a recluse and ace. And then April 21st, 2018, Project Diverge happens. I finally run my own show. 
a lot of animosity and a lot of drama going into that show. And a lot of it was self-inflicted. Some of it wasn't. And then the aftermath of my personal life after that show transpired, I thought I was done with pro wrestling. I said, I'm done. And then I did ISW, uh, balls out at the, uh, at the uh, collective for GCW. And look at them now running Hammerstein ballroom, huge thumbs up. And I, I started this just to get my mind off of things and doing this nothing stuff saga with LSG that night and getting things ready. Uh, it was a big thing. I needed that. And, but I still hated pro wrestling. And, I, and it, it was a lot of things that going into it. I just despised that industry. An industry that I identified myself with for such a long time. And it was at uh, Dan Murdoch's wedding with Annie Mae Murdoch. When they got married, I got to see Mike Morgan again. Me and Mike had a falling out. A lot of it was my fault, self-inflicted. And me and him made peace. And he's like, look, a couple weeks we're running Crossroads. If you want to come and do commentary for it, be lovely to have you. And... I was nervous. Everyone didn't know if I was going to show up. That was a big thing. No one knew if I was going to be there. And I, I came prepared. And this notebook, this notebook I held on to for years. I always wanted a reason to have like these type of notebooks where it's got all these you know papers and everything like that. And, and obviously paper to a notebook. Ooh. But with this book, I was like, I'm going to complete this full notebook. I'm going to do commentary and I'm going to write it down. And whenever I start doing shows... I'm going to start filling this thing out. And literally, this night, I mean, the first ever match I called for this night, November 16, 2019, was Crossroads 15 in Wallington, New Jersey at the Morgan Junior Arena. The first match I called was a chance of a lifetime. I got to call the chance of a lifetime match and saw absolute Alvin uh, win the chance of a lifetime rumble. And from that point, and I even put notes here. I mean, look at these notes. I mean... It's the card and everything. And I even wrote my little note up top. First show back at commentary in five years back in the game. And I just wrote that note just to remember getting my feet back in. And I still hated wrestling, but I knew I could do commentary. I love commentary. Joey Styles in ECW is my major inspiration. He's the greatest commentator I ever heard. And I just wanted to be Joey Styles. So I got back into it. And with Cheyenne running around the entire time, I basically carried the entire show on my lonesome and I called the entire night and it was a lot of fun and then we get to March 7th 2020 uh, Stan Stiles gave me a call uh, about a month before that's right daddy and he called and he's like do you want to do commentary for the intergender bonanza I'm looking for a new commentator I feel like you'd be the guy for the job and I said yes sir and I went into uh, the H2O Wrestling Center in Williamstown, New Jersey, and I was able to call the, the first ever intergender rumble, which was a big deal for me, getting back in it by myself. And thanks to Jimmy Chondo Leon, uh, Chondo and and Stan, who liked my work, they kept using me. To the point to where I kept using this notebook and writing notes and calling matches and being able to call an internet pay-per-view back in August, and then doing Joey styling it and calling the entire internet pay-per-view last week which was unbelievable for me unbelievable and it, it meant the world to me knowing that i still had it and then finally last night i got the call rise to power november 27 2021 in teaneck new jersey and on the last page of this notebook from the chance of a lifetime rumble to captain emmett payne against romeo castillo and ray calitri against the monkey king uh <laughs> <laughs> Say what you want, the Monkey King's awesome. I actually admire the character. I completed the notebook. Every page was filled in this notebook. And for me, this is a giant, giant victory for me. And with heartbreak and frustration and hatred of wrestling, I have now started to really enjoy professional wrestling again for what it is, trying to get my fandom back. And doing pro wrestling commentary has allowed me to do that. And the completion of this notebook is a symbol symbol is i'm back in the game i love pro wrestling again and i like to thank mike morgan i like to thank stan styles i like to thank my friends for telling me to never give up and to keep going thank my girlfriend for making me keep going and believing in me and i think it was a quote from dawson's creek of all things eddie don't get any ideas we're not bringing revisiting cape site back but um 
A.I. Brooks was standing outside of Dawson Leary's house before the Christmas party in season four. And he goes, and the question was, why do you love making pictures so much? And Dawson said, you don't choose what you love, it chooses you. And I love pro wrestling, and I love commentary. So being able to come back and call the show um, showcases my love for professional wrestling and my love for commentary. So never give up on yourself. Even if you are 36 years old, definitely an old man compared to the young guys looking to make a future in pro wrestling. Never give up. Never, ever give up. And with that said, this notebook being completed, that is only the beginning uh, for professional wrestling for me. 36, man. I'm still a young man. My hair might be gray, but I still got the, I still have the childlike love like never before. And, uh, you know, I love my life. And I love the fact I'm doing commentary again. So thanks to Mike. Thanks to Ace. Thanks to Stan. Thanks to the Intergender Bonanza. Thanks to Chondo and everybody. So uh, with that said, I just want to give a positive message. Don't give up on yourself. If you love something, I can't believe I'm going to say this cheesy line. If you love something a lot, let it go. And if it comes back to you, then you know it's true love. And pro wrestling commentary, pro wrestling in general, and me, will always be like this. So, a lot of cliches <laughs> to close this thing out, but I don't give a damn. But this is Unfiltered. I'm John Harder. Hardwayhq.com.